Okay, this is podcast number nine, and it deals with buoyancy. You might have heard of Archime uh, Archimedes' principle before, and it states that a body experiences an upthrust, which is a force that is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. The upthrust acts through the centroid of the displaced volume. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's take a look at this submerged object. It's just a blue object that's submerged there. We have points uh, around that object defined as A, B, D, E, C, and F. It's submerged in a fluid of density rho, and we're assuming that the external fluid, the white fluid, has a density equal to zero. So the force on the surface of B, D, E, which is the lower surface, B, D, E, is equal to the weight of the imaginary or overlying fluid, which is equal to the weight of the fluid from A, B, D, E, and F. The force in the surface, the top surface of the, of the submerged object, um, is equal to, or B, C, E, is equal to the weight of A, B, C, E, F. Therefore, the net force on the object is equal to the weight of fluid occupied between B, C, E, and D. So that is the displaced volume. Therefore, the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced volume, which is equal to rho G, V. So the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the displaced fluid. Not the density of the object, but the density of the displaced fluid times gravity times the volume of that object. And it acts at the centroid or center of the imaginary fluid. So let's take a look at whether something floats or sinks. Again, we have some sort of cylinder here, which is submerged in a fluid. Its <coughs> maximum buoyancy force is the density of the fluid times gravity times the volume of this drum. The weight of the drum is the mass of the drum multiplied by gravity, which is equal to the average density of the drum. Now I say average density because drums can be considered to be, maybe it's a metal drum, it has some air inside it and has maybe some liquid inside it. The average density is what we have to use in this case. So the average density of the drum multiplied by the volume of the drum multiplied by gravity. The drum floats when the weight is less than the buoyancy force, less than or equal to the buoyancy force. And that means that the average density of the drum would have to be less than or equal to the density of the fluid. So let's now take a look at a brief demonstration of this principle. Okay, what I have here is a simple column or a cylinder of water. Just typical uh, drinking water that has a density of about 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. I'm going to put in a weight, which is called a hydrometer. It has a ballast or weight at the bottom and is about the same density overall as the density of water. So by placing it in here, I would expect it to just about float. And I'll bop around until it reaches stable equilibrium. This is actually a device for measuring the density of a fluid, and if you read across here, you would be able to read that the density is equal to 1.00. So that states that the specific uh, weight of the water, or the density of the water, is equal to 1,000. Now, if I was to add some table salt, what would happen is that the, uh, it would be dissolved in the fluid. So you'd expect the volume inside the cylinder to stay the same, but that the density of the fluid would increase. So we're just placing it in the top and hoping for it to, to dissolve, as it will, with a bit of a shake. You can see that the hydrometer has risen substantially from the top of the cylinder. So this states that the volume now has stayed the same in here, but the the density of the fluid is much larger, therefore the buoyancy force is much larger, and less of the volume is therefore submerged for the same weight of the hydrometer. Okay, back to some slides. So we'll now look at an example question. The example question states, to what depth or how deep <coughs> in the water does this drum, which has a weight of 250 kilograms, float if it has a diameter of 0 0.8 meters and overall the height of the drum is one meter. 
Another way of asking is what is h? In this diagram we want to find out what is the submerged depth, so what is h? We're going to say that it's submerged in seawater, so the density is slightly higher than that of typical drinking water. It's uh, about 2% uh, more dense, so it has a density of 1 point, oh, sorry, 1,020 kilograms per meter cubed, which gives a specific volume or <coughs> specific gravity of 1.02, which is its ratio with the density of water. So we start by looking at the forces acting up and acting down. We have mass times gravity acting down which is equal to the volume, the displaced volume, times density, times gravity, acting up. By crossing over, we can take out gravity and put in the volume, which is density times pi d squared over 4 times h, the submerged volume. And we're trying to solve for h here, remember. So by crossing over, we can see that h is equal to 4 over pi d squared over rho, multiplied by the mass. And by using SI units, so the density now is 1,020, we can calculate that the submerged depth would be less than half a meter, so 0 0.488 meters. And that concludes the ninth podcast, which was on buoyancy.